Greetings, this is Danny from Cradle of Filth, and you're watching Mammoth Metal TV. Hey, we're here with Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth to talk about the new album, Cryptoriana, The Seductive Dis of Decay. So, how are you going, man? Yeah, good. Excellent. Okay, yeah. I just want to talk about the recording of the album and the process you went through. Was it? Did you just go in and do the whole album all at once, or were you having things in between and stuff? No, we did it all at once. Um, well, the video was actually done once the bulk of the album. I think there was still some mixing to be done that was after that, but we coincided the filming of the video in Latvia with Lindsay coming over and recording her parts. Everybody came in one at a time to Grindstone Studios, which is in the middle of Suffolk where I live. It's very remote. Um, so not a lot to do other than concentrate on the album, which is obviously the main thing. But we took ourselves to Brno in the Czech Republic uh, for a couple of weeks. That's where Martin and Ashok live. And we took ourselves there last summer um, so we were doing a festival in Slovakia at the end of those two weeks. So we thought we'd use that time to put the album together because everybody had been working quite hard on their own ideas, either whole songs or parts of songs or collaborative efforts with someone else. Um, and we intended to come back from that session with, I don't know, 50 percent half of it, sort of in the bag. But we actually came away with about 80 to 85% a bit written, um, so prolific were, was all the work that people were putting into it. Um, and it, it, it caught me off kilter because I hadn't expected so much to be done so quickly and suddenly I was presented with pretty much a whole album and I had to throw an idea around it. Um, and so once that writing session happened, it was a catalyst for everything to start. And it came around pretty quickly. Um, fortunately, it was a very good time of the year. It was autumn and you know, it was very atmospheric. I think I just had a couple of weeks off for a tour with my other band, Devilment, but that was it. I was pretty much um, after Christmas of last year in the studio to about June. Oh, cool. And this is like the fifth album I think you've done with Scott Atkins producing? Something like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, how's he as a producer? Does he help with the arrangements and stuff, or is it just... Well, he suggests down? things at a later date, so things do mutate in the studio. The whole thing with the Liv Christine track um, was born of trying to experiment a little bit more, and then it moved into one step further, and then suggesting um, bringing in someone that we'd worked with before and changing the structures somewhat to try and make it as original as possible. It, it's good working with Scott because he's one of these people that's very much into metal, works very hard, has his own opinion, not too opinionated. And he's also one of those people that will say, you know, damn, that shit, do something else, or we need to move this around. And yeah, I, I'm, I, he gets the best out of you. feel very comfortable working with him. And although it's the same studio, the same album, they're different songs, different techniques, and we change up what we're kind of doing with each album, what instruments, I mean, what, what techniques we, we're using to, you know, whether it's a different guitar tone or a different rack or a different piece of equipment. So we're quite confident that even with another album um, undertaken with Scott, that things will, because I mean, we obviously want to take a little step away from this now, I think we've pushed it as far as we can. I think next record we're going to take a little bit more time over, especially with the longevity of the world tour and the fact that next year we're going to be doing summer festivals as well. Um, so we might look at an album at the back end of next year, but more probably or not, 2020. And we'll probably be a little bit more experimental. I don't want to talk about you know, going prog or, or jazz fusion or reggae or anything like that, but I think mm -hmm. that something that's very different for, for us. Yeah. And the Annihilator cover you have on here, I've heard you say that they were one of the bands that you were into when you were... We've been wanting, we days. were wanting to do that cover pretty much since Cruelty and the Beast. And it just kept getting brushed under the carpet. And then we 
a few years back on the Hammer of the Witches tour, we bumped into Jeff Waters, mentioned that we were interested in doing it. And he was like, yeah, man, yeah, you should get all over that. And then we met him again on 70,000 tons of metal, and he asked after it, so we kind of thought, well... Yeah, yeah. yeah got to now, yeah. I feel compelled not to let him down. And ironically, he heard that I sent him a copy of the track, and he posted saying that he thought it was, you know, one of the best covers that he'd heard of his stuff, so... Cool. Yeah, yeah, we were very pleased. We tried not to over-cradle it, we wanted to play it quite close to the original. Yeah. There's a few little, you know... Um, extra keys and, and, and vocals in there, yeah. but generally it's, it's played as close to the bone as we, as damn it. Yeah, cool. And what were some of the other bands in your thrash metal days that were a big influence to you? Oh God, loads. Uh, dark, not the darkness, but darkness, violent force, possessed, uh, razor, sacrifice, battery. Annihilator, Annihilated, <laughs> there's just too many, to, uh, you know, yeah. loads, absolutely loads, Slayer, Slayer, obviously, and Merciful yeah. Fate, if you can call them the Thrash app, but yeah, King Diamond. And so just a week or so ago we had Slayers doing their yeah, final tour, yeah, 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 yeah. What, what do you that, think about it? I don't believe it for an instance, I, you yeah. know. I fell for the uh, Aussie touring for the last time in 83 or whatever it was. Yeah, or Kiss did it as well in 2000. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it was Scorpions have done it, you know, Accept have done it. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, if the money's right, people come out of retirement. Maybe it's another way to boost their, you know, their, their sales a bit, announcing the last tour. I hope it's not their last tour. It'd be a bit yeah, sad if it's it is. Pretty sad, but I've heard Tom Araya talking about he's getting sick of touring in the last few years. But I'm guessing they'll still do gigs after this. Just not I, massive tours. No, no. I think the same applies to them as with people like Danzig. You know, just think. You know, do I need to be doing? Am I comfortable? They're probably comfortable enough to you know be close to retirement. Yeah. They get paid well for gigs if they're you know if they're not touring. For one off, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think they'll be all right. Yeah, hopefully they do a few more shows. Uh, I saw a thing in your house when you let someone come into your house and look around all your stuff, and I noticed a Darth Maul thing in all of the different stuff. Are you a Star Wars fan at all, or was that just one figure? Uh, like? Yeah, I'm into Star Wars, but I'm, I'm not a massive avid collector. I've got bits and pieces, you know, bits I like. Um, I'm more into just the movies. When I was a kid, obviously, I had all the figures and stuff, yeah, yeah. but nowadays it's just gone a bit above and beyond. Um, and what with the fact, like, I've got like 300 living dead dolls and just crap. Well, yeah, I've just yeah. decided time to rein it all in, you know? Yeah. Because uh, I just had my loft converted to keep all my toys that I don't take out of the boxes. Yeah. And uh, that took me about three months just to put everything up there. And... Uh, put it all out, you know, yeah, so um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Star Wars and that. So what did yeah. you think about the new one? I liked yeah, it, so I liked yeah. it a lot, it was, it was a bit confusing, I don't know where they're going to go for, from from here because they seem to have killed off every sort of avenue really, other than a spoiled brat leading the, uh, the first order to victory, Yeah. but I, I literally have no idea, I'm not sure even if they do because I, I believe they've swapped directors back to... JJ. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they want to give the other guy, you know, another sort of multiverse to work with in another three movies. So I don't know where. My favourite one recently, I would say, was uh, the Rogue one. one. Yeah, definitely. Me it was too. fantastic, and and the fact you actually saw Darth Vader. Yeah. And it all tied in, and and just to see why that hole was in there in the first one that was so easy to shoot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 like, yeah that was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that easy just to shoot, was it? Well, you had to be a fluke. Yeah. yeah. But still. Um, about touring, like, are there any places that you haven't been that you'd like to go to? Well, we're going right at the very end of this in six weeks' time. We're going to be going to Israel, which we haven't done. Uh, Turkey, we've, we were booked in three on three separate occasions, and every single time there was something that happened politically in the country. Which, uh, strangely enough, the last one was a special guest to Slayer, and that was when that, all the riots kicked off, yeah. and that they decided that there wouldn't be any big large public gatherings for a while so that got knocked on the head which is a shame that South, South Africa we've always wanted to go and play somewhere like Johannesburg 
New Zealand, which again that seems to have been lift off this this next talk. So we're going Japan, Australia, but don't don't seem to be going there, so that would be good as well. Yeah, that's why I'm asking because I'm from New Zealand. Oh, really? I don't think you've ever been to. New well, Zealand no, we before. haven't. But it's not for one to try. And I think it's you know at the end of the day, it's about if the promoter wants to book the band and it's exactly. viable. Yeah. I noticed that it's not like you can just nip over there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But uh, I noticed in the tour dates there's a bit of a gap at the end of Australia, and then you have a couple of weeks off, and then to Greece. So yeah. Maybe. So some promoter? Exactly. Hook exactly. them up. The Cruelty and the Beast remake that you're doing, yeah. is that ready to go? It's pretty much there. We've, we've, we've spent six weeks. It sounds a lot of time on a mix. But if you consider the odds that we, that are stacked against us, the fact that we've had to take them from the original tapes and transfer them to digital, yeah. and because they are on tape, you know, they're, they're set to their own click track. They're 20 years old, so there's a lot of things that have had to change, and it's been a lot of work to get it to a place where it's going to sound brilliant, but hasn't robbed any of the atmosphere. Yeah. And I think people are really going to dig it. I mean, we've we've done the whole album plus. Hallowed Be Thy Name, because it was also another track that we felt sat very well with the album and also suffered from a rather shoddy drum sound. So I think people are really going to like it. We haven't actually finished it. Uh, the thing with, with Scott is that he's a perfectionist as well. And even though he's got other jobs on, he's like sending us mixes over and, and just... We're not going overboard on it. We just want to make the fans very proud of the fact that we... Like beef it up a little bit. Yeah, and made uh, and kept the same because it's a tightrope really to walk, yeah. a really thin knife edge between, you know, making it sound great and modern and big uh, and destroying all the atmosphere. So we, you know, we want to retain that. Obviously, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a real trip down memory lane, and um, yeah, I can't wait for Big here. I don't know when it's coming out, but it's coming out this year. Yeah. It would be good if you could do May 5th and then it's exactly 20 years to the day. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah, since I heard you were redoing I had to listen to the old one and just thought, like, this could be great. With oh, it will be. It, it sounds, it sounds sound huge. Stuff. It sounds yeah. huge. Because obviously, with a bigger drum sound, bigger everything else. The main thing that you hear that could be beefed up. Is Absolutely. The, the kick drums are a bit too triggery. Sound like two pins hitting two other pins. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, cool, man. Thanks. We're looking forward to hearing it. And thanks for your time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers.